Hey, happy Saturday, everyone. Uh, I hope you're enjoying your weekend as much as I am here, cozied up by the fire. Uh, you know, the weather is changing, the season's changing, and I hope that provides an opportunity in your own life for uh, maybe the spiritual season of your life to change as well. Maybe one through this devotional, and two, just as we kind of move inside from being outside during the nice, uh, maybe hot summer, but we at least are outside, but as we move inside with the cold weather, maybe a little more time to read our word, maybe a little more time to study, to pray, to maybe focus on those spiritual aspects of our life. And I pray that'd be a reality for you as it would be for me. But today, our topic is the key to the master's orders. October 16th, uh, Matthew 9, 38. Pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. So Chambers here quotes in part, uh, this passage in part of a larger context, which is, uh, Christ seeing the masses, seeing the multitudes, and having compassion on them because they were scattered like sheep without a shepherd. And so he tells his disciples that though uh, there's much work to be done, that the workers are few. And so he then tells them that to pray to the Lord of the harvest to send laborers or send workers to do the harvest, to do the work of the kingdom that needs to be done. Uh, now, perspective, which I think is true, but one that doesn't immediately come to our mind. He says this, the key to the missionary's difficult task is in the hand of God. And that key is prayer, not work. That is, not work as the word is commonly used today, which often results in the shifting of our focus away from God. The key to the missionary's difficult task is also not the key of common sense, nor is it the key of medicine, civilization, education, or even evangelization. The key is in following the master's orders. The key is prayer. Quote, pray the Lord of the harvest. In the natural realm, prayer is not practical, but absurd. We have to realize that prayer is foolish from the common sense point of view. And so what I think Chambers is pointing out here is from a naturalistic standpoint, prayer is just wishful thinking. Prayer is just hope founded on nothing. What gets things done is hard work, planning, waking up early, doing more. But Chambers says, no, that's the natural man. That's common sense coming out. Christ tells us to pray, pray to do this work. So I remember when I was in ministry school, one of the first things that I remember the pastor sharing with me is to always remember that prayer is the work of the church. Now, I didn't fully understand that then. I thought it was profound and in fact, kind of paradoxical. But as I get older, the more and more I understand that, that prayer is the work. Of course, there's more work to be done than just praying for things. But we can't rightly do anything until we're first in line with the will of God, until we're first in prayer, submitted to God, and have a clear picture of how and what he wants us to do. Now, some things we don't know right away. He reveals them in time. Other things like this, being laborers, doing his work, is clearly, we know it's of God because Christ tells us this is what God's will is, that pray to God that he will send you and others to do the work of the kingdom. Uh, so if you get anything from that, it's pray more. Stop relying on your own thinking and common sense and thinking you have to do more and wake up and try harder and better, better, more, more. Pray. The Lord will direct your paths and make your work more fruitful. There's an old saying or quote by Martin Luther. He said, I had so much to do today, I had to pray an extra hour. That's my paraphrase, but it's pretty close. He might even send an extra two hours. But the point there is that he had to pray more because he had more to do. That's not how we think, but it should be. A couple more quotes here from Chambers that I think are important. Chambers says this, um, We stay busy at work while people all around us are ripe and ready to be harvested. We do not reap even one of them, but simply waste our Lord's time in over-energized activities and programs. And so what Chambers is getting at there in his larger context, which we're not reading all of it, but he's, he's talking about the people out there are ready to be ministered to, to be harvested, to be brought into the kingdom. But all of our focus in, and energy goes into activities and programs that are supposed to be activities and programs for the Lord, but oftentimes they just take up our energy. So we don't have time to actually minister because we're focused on all these tasks and all these programs. Now, 
If this is true 100 years ago when Chambers is writing it, it is 100 times more true today. We're a very overstimulated culture. Programs run the day, even in the church. It's, you know, I think COVID has changed a lot of that, but Monday's this, Tuesday's that, Wednesday's this. And sometimes we don't have time just to sit, pray, hear from the Lord, and minister to who he's calling us to minister to. Chambers ends it with this. Our Lord calls us not to uh, calls us to no special work. He calls us to Himself. Pray the Lord of the Harvest, and He will engineer your circumstances to send you out as His laborer. Let us ponder that. We'll see you Monday. Uh, I, in case you missed last Saturday, I won't be doing these on Sunday. Uh, most of you guys are in church. Uh, but uh, we'll pick back up Monday. But again, pray uh, that the Lord would send us out as his laborers and let us uh, ponder on those things. God bless.